My new book is called Pain and Retribution, A Short History of British Prisons, 1066 to the Present Day. So there's a, a joke in one sense in the title. This is a short history, but it's going back to the Norman Conquest all the way up to the present day. But I, I put short in the title because it's 80,000 words long and each of the chapters in the book could have been a book in themselves. Uh, the title I chose with some care because one of the themes that guides the book is that I see this as a history of continuity, not of breaks with the past, but of continuities in the history of our prisons, which I argue in the book have always been characterized by pain and retribution. That pain and that retribution might have been extracted or imposed in different ways throughout our history of prisons, but I see this, this as a continuity, not as a, a break from the past. There's another a thread that guides the narrative, which is I argue in the book that prison has always had to make itself legitimate to three different and sometimes competing audiences. And those audiences are uh, the public, and um, when I say the public audience, I also include politicians as well as members of the public in that particular group. Uh, the second audience that prison has to make itself legitimate to are prison staff. And the third group that prison has to make itself legitimate to are the prisoners themselves. Which audience is in the ascendancy at different points in the history creates the circumstances in which prison has to operate. And to give you some sense of how there can be competing tensions between these three audiences, let's just think of one simple issue, such as food. If you were the prisoner, you would want three hot meals a day. However, the public audience for prison might interpret the serving of three hot meals a day to people who've broken the law very differently to how prison staff or indeed how the prisoners might um, interpret that fact that you were allowing prisoners to have three hot meals. When I was a prison governor, the biggest issue I ever faced was when the local newspaper discovered that we were serving roast turkey on, Chris, on our Christmas lunch menu. The public did not interpret, it, interpret that decision as one of being liberal or being uh, positive about what we could do with offenders. They simply equated that fact with the reality that there were some people who had not offended who wouldn't be able to eat roast turkey. So this is one of the themes that guides the narrative of the book. Which audience is going to be in ascendancy at particular points in the history? of the book. The final thread that, that characterizes the narrative is that I try as much as possible to tell the story of prison from the people who are experiencing imprisonment. Now quite obviously that means the prisoners, so I do try to use the voices of prisoners throughout the narrative of the book, but it also means prison staff. I want to try and understand why people would have a career locking up other people. Because if you think about it, that's quite an odd decision in terms of a career that you're going to choose. So throughout, I try and tell the story of prison by having the reader come with me, walk with me on the landings to see who's being locked up and to see who is doing the locking up. And ultimately, as the narrative of the book comes closer to the present day, I try to explain to the reader why it's perfectly possible to have less crime, safer communities, and fewer people in prison. And so the book is trying to challenge the reader to really think through some of these so-called common sense decisions that are made when we lock up more and more people in our jails. Because the simple reality is today, we are locking up more elderly people, 
more young people, more people from a, a, an ethnic or religious back, uh, minority background. We're, we have more life sentence prisoners currently being locked up than the whole of Western Europe combined. And yet, and yet, the book is challenging the reader to say, why should that be the case, especially when it's perfectly possible to have less crime, safer communities, and fewer people in our jails.